Okay, so in this video, with the help of the determinant of a square matrix, we'll try to extend the shortcut formula for the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix. So remember the following result. If A is a 2 by 2 matrix, where the entries are A, B, C, D, we know A inverse exists, hence A is invertible, if and only if A, D minus B, C is not equal to 0. And if AD minus BC is not equal to 0, then A inverse is 1 over AD minus BC times the matrix D negative B negative C A. A question is, does there exist a similar formula for the inverse of a 3 by 3 invertible matrix or 4 by 4? And so on. And the answer is yes. All we have to look at is find a way to replace each quantity here by a quantity that actually does exist for arbitrary square matrices. Well, let's start with the simplest quantity right here. AD minus BC, well, that is the determinant of A. So right away we can replace. We can say 1 over AD minus BC, that only applies to a 2 by 2 matrix, but for any square matrix where the determinant of A is not 0, we can certainly compute 1 over its determinant. And now this makes sense for any square matrix. What about the entries of this 2 by 2 matrix? Well, let's go back to A and let's compute its four cofactors, each one for the particular entry. Let's compute them here. So C11, negative 1 to the 1 plus 1 is negative 1 squared is positive 1. And that is the determinant of the matrix obtained from A after we delete row 1, column 1. If you delete row 1, column 1, you have the determinant of the matrix D. But the determinant of a 1 by 1 matrix is simply the entry itself. So C11 is D. So if you look here, you can replace D by C11 because the cofactor C11 does make sense for any square matrix. Let's find C12. Negative 1 to D1 plus 2 is negative 1 cubed. That's negative 1. So negative the minor M12, the determinant obtained from A, after we delete the first row, second column. If you delete the first row, second column, you're left with the entry C. And once again, the determinant of a 1 by 1 matrix is a single entry, so what we have is negative C. Would you look at that? Negative C is C12, and again, for any square matrix, the cofactor C12 does make sense. Let's keep going. Let's find C21. Once again, 2 plus 1 is 3. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1. Determinant of the matrix obtained from A after we delete the second row, first column. Second row, first column, and you have the entry B. So all we get is negative B. And again, negative B is right here. It is C21. And let's find our fourth and final cofactor, C22. 2 plus 2 is 4. Negative 1 to the fourth power is positive 1. Determinant of the matrix obtained from A after deleting the second row, second column. Delete the second row, second column, and what you have is the entry A. And the determinant of the 1 by 1 matrix A is, again, simply A. There it is. So we can replace A by its cofactor, C22. And notice that all of these make sense in the context of any given square matrix. So now we're getting closer. And if you look here, it's almost as if we replace the entry by its corresponding cofactor. If you write the matrix using index notation, this would be A11, this would be A12, this would be A21, 
this would be A22. And let's see what happens. The entry A11 was replaced by the cofactor, its corresponding cofactor C11. The entry A22 was replaced by its corresponding cofactor C22. And here was inter what is actually interesting. The entry A12 was replaced not by its cofactor C12, but by C21. And the entry A21 was not replaced by its cofactor C21, but C12. But if you look at this, if we transpose the matrix, then we get a one-to-one -one correspondence. Transpose the matrix and you get C11, C21, C12, C22. And there you have it. Look at this. A inverse is 1 over the determinant of A times the transpose of the matrix. And how do you build this matrix? You replace each entry by its corresponding cofactor. A11 is replaced by its cofactor C11. A12 is replaced by its cofactor C12. A21 is replaced by its cofactor C21. And A22 is replaced by its cofactor C22. And all of this makes perfect sense for any given square matrix. We give this matrix a very special name. We call it the adjoint of A. And we usually denote it by A D J of A. And I sometimes use the following notation as well. What we have here is the cofactor matrix of the matrix A. So I write C subscript A. So what I mean by this is replace every entry of A, A11 by C11, by its corresponding cofactor, right? So take the matrix A, replace each entry by its corresponding cofactor, and you get the matrix CA. But of course, you have to transpose this matrix, and that's the adjoint. So why am I using this notation? Because the adjoint looks a bit cryptic. When you look at C of A, all this means is the cofactor matrix of A. So replace each entry of A by its corresponding cofactor and transpose and you get the adjoint formula. And again, ADJ of A is called the adjoint of A. And now we can write our conclusion. So, in two parts, this is our theorem now. Let A be any square matrix. First part, the inverse exists, so A inverse does exist. Therefore, A is invertible if and only if the determinant of A it's not equal to zero, because then obviously we can't compute one over the determinant of A. And B, if the determinant of A is non-zero, then the matrix A is invertible, and we have the so-called adjoint formula. The A inverse is just one over the determinant of A times the adjoint matrix of A. If you prefer, you can rewrite this as 1 over the determinant of A. And all the adjoint is again is the cofactor matrix of A. So replace each entry of the matrix by its corresponding cofactor. But at the end, don't forget to transpose the matrix of cofactors. And this is what is called the adjoint formula. In our next video, we'll do an example of the adjoint formula in the case of a 3x3 matrix.